if you're new to sim racing, there's a fairly good chance that your steering wheel is just clamped to your desk. You probably have your pedals just thrown on the ground and they move all about. And you might even be in a swivel chair. So when you're turning the wheel, you're constantly being turned as well. And it could even be on wheels. So when you hit the brakes, it's constantly rolling back. We have all been there. That is part of the sim racing evolution. But maybe now it's time to consider buying a new rig. So today I do present to you the Next Level Racing GT Racer. This is an entry-level chassis that gives you everything you need to convert from being a desktop racer into your own private cockpit. The GT Racer comes in at only $399 and we consider some of the add-ons and the adjustability, some of its features, that is a very reasonable price. The rig is entirely made of metal. It's powder coated steel, carbon steel, and it has a ton of adjustability that we'll talk about a little bit later. It includes a shifter mount that can be mounted on the left or right hand side. It includes a butt kicker mount. It includes a reclining seat and all of that for that $399 price, which is just amazing. The GT Racer is also a small footprint. It's lightweight and it's compatible with all common gear on the market today. With the GT Racer being an entry level chassis and coming in at only $400, there are a few things that you can tell about the chassis right away. It's only made of this one inch steel tubing, which is pretty lightweight in modern rigs. And it's what makes the rig overall very light and easy to move around, but it also cut down on costs. Also, you can see the pedal plate itself isn't extremely thick. It's strong and well supported. We'll talk about that in a minute, as well as the wheel deck as well, which is made of this like one eighth inch steel. And it's just a simple boxed in structure that is lightweight, but does its job very well. So it, that is one of the ways is keeping it very lightweight, keeps the cost down, but it also means it's not as robust or strong as like a profile chassis, which you can pretty much put a car on top of. They're so ridiculously strong, but they'd also cost you twice as much. Now, again, with it being a beginner or an entry level rig, another nice thing is it's very easy to build and it comes with all the tools and all the hardware and a great set of instructions to follow. And it's very simple because the whole front section, the front lower section is pre-welded. So is the re rear section and they just kind of telescope together and then you tie them down in the middle and then you have an upright that bolts on with four bolts that connects to that front section and then you have two support arms that support that and you bolt on the seat. The entire assembly only took me about 30 minutes so it's very easy. Anyone can do it. You don't even have to be a NASA scientist. It's just simple and basic to build. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the adjustments starting off with the wheel deck which it is amazing for a $400 rig how much adjustment they have in this wheel deck. So starting off with the compatibility, you see all these holes drilled in this deck? Well, look at this instruction manual and it shows you the compatibility list of all of the wheels that are compatible. So that's amazing right there. Then you've got all these series of slots and holes, four different heights and three different angles, I guess, depending on how you do it. So you can put this anywhere from this height all the way down to this height, and then you have a bunch of adjustability and angle. So just to give you a quick example, we'll go to say this position here, and I'll get one in the front to match. And then you have anywhere from there, as far as the, the highest or most inclined downward towards the driver, and you can tilt this all the way till the point that it actually hits the rails. So we'll come up just slightly to that position. So you have a lot of degrees of angle of adjustability there. Now, in addition, you can put, position this anywhere from here all the way to here. So you have a lot of front to back adjustability. Again, a ton of adjustability for a $400 rig. So when it comes to the wheel deck, you have all that going on. Now, before you even adjust and finalize the position of the wheel deck, my suggestion with most rigs is always to start with the pedals because it's usually the place where we have the least amount of adjustment. So with the pedals, we have these slots. And again, going back to their compatibility chart, you can see this will accommodate all of the Thrustmaster, all of the Fanatic, all of the Logitech, all of the Moza, 
Certainly couldn't use the inverted one on this setup here. But, and then you have these slots. So with that, you have all that compatibility, but you could basically bolt down any three independent pedals in this configuration as well. So tons of compatibility there. But there is a big uh-oh. And that is, this pedal deck is at a pretty extreme incline. Measures in at 20 degrees of incline towards the driver. And it is a fixed position. So that means that any pedals that are like pro formats, we'll call them super high-end pedals, usually you will find most high-end pedals sit almost 90 degrees, perfectly up and down, where you want your pedals flat and almost equal with your seat. This 20 degree incline works fine for all of those pedals on that list, but with high performance pedals, you're gonna find 20 degree incline is way too much. So I'd have to do something to build up the bottom, and that would also create a little limitation on the height of certain pedals even fitting in there. So that is one uh-oh about this chassis. As far as the plate goes, it's super strong. Even though it's thin metal, because it's well reinforced, any pedal set that have its own base it's going to be plenty strong enough, and we'll talk about what it does strength-wise when we get down to driving this rig. So with your pedals in the right distance and position, you then have a ton of adjustability to set your seat. So it is on sliders, and this seat is a really cool seat because for most rigs, they come with pretty lame seats. I, I'm not a big fan of racing seats, to be honest with you. What I do love are nice reclinable bucket seats, and that's what you have here, and it's a $400 rig. Yeah, it's it's cheap pleather. It's a fake suede on the spot where you sit, and the cushioning's a little bit stiff, which means it'll probably last a while, and it, it is a little stiff, and I'm hoping it'll soften up just a little bit over time for more comfort, but it is really comfortable because it gets me at that lumber spot where racing seats don't, and then you have this recline. And you can put it all the way more back than that and all the way forward to right there. So a lot of adjustability in the seat. So once you have your pedals, that'll position your seat where you need it to be. And now you can determine the distance and the angle that you need your wheel to be at. Now, once this is in place, we know where it's gonna be. We can then attach these reinforcement bars. We want them as far forward for best support as we possibly can get them. But at the same time, and now we'll talk about the shifter real quick. With the shifter mount, you can mount it like this, which is gonna be a lot wider, or you can mount it like this, and that's gonna be a lot more forward or backward or tighter to the driver. And then you have anywhere from up here all the way down to down here position-wise, and then on the same thing left or right. Now the thing I found is when I put this where they had recommended for best support, it put the shifter too far back, but I could actually move it forward. So I moved this second reinforcement. That's why you'll see mine are staggered. It was to get the shifter exactly where I needed it to be. So a lot of adjustability for the shifter. In addition to that, the GT Racer comes with the shifter plate extension, which makes it wide enough to put a shifter and a handbrake on it simultaneously. So it's plenty strong enough to hold all the shifters from the companies that we've named for the wheel and pedal combos as well. So. A lot of adjustability to get where you need to be. Plenty strong enough for that level of equipment. And if you were stepping up to a higher grade equipment, same thing with the wheel and the pedals. You'd probably be looking at a different rig anyway that kind of keeps us into that entry level, converting from a desktop driver into their first sim rig. I don't think you could do better than this one for the price, but it does have its limitations based on being a lightweight build and based on having that pedal rake and a few other things that we'll talk about when we get down to driving, which we're gonna go ahead and do next. When it comes down to driving in the GT Racer, we can throw out all the specs. None of that matters anymore. It really comes down to ergonomics, compatibility and adjustability, and then overall strength while being subjected to the rigors of sim racing. So let's go through it all piece by piece, starting off with the ergonomics. Hence the name, GT Racer. It is a GT position. I would say it's a semi-relaxed GT position. And the reason I say that is the pedals are a little bit lower than the seat. And I do have the adjustability of the reclining seat. So with those features, you can make it really comfortable. So it's GT focused on comfortable, let's say. So the ergonomics are overall really good. The adjustability of the wheel deck, being able to adjust it up, down, forward, back, and an angle, 
means that just about any driver on just about any kind of equipment is going to be able to get it exactly where they want it for ultimate comfortableness is that a word comfortableness and ultimate precision being able to do exactly what you want with the steering wheel and no unnecessary friction from the wrong angle or the wrong height so all of those ergonomics are excellent excellent as good as it gets and and better than i would even expect from a 400 dollars chassis to be honest with you now when we get down to the pedals it's not quite as good we have that fixed 20 degree angle, which means it's not even gonna work with all in, all pedals. Inverted pedals are out. Super duper vertical pedals are probably out unless you have uh, amazing ankles with uh, endless flexibility. For me, this is pushing the boundaries right here with these Moza pedals and I've gotten comfortable but I would say it's not even optimal. I would still push these down uh, a few degrees before I'd call it comfortable. So something that I could, that could be improved on the rig would be, in my opinion, a flat pedal base, which wouldn't work as good for the intended user, which is probably somebody with a set of Logitech or Thrustmaster or Fanatic pedals. And when you're in, in at those pedals, this angle is probably gonna work a lot better than the pedals that I'm using right here. So I, I could see improvement there. The shifter. I was blown away with how perfectly I can get the shifter exactly where I want it. Usually shifters on even expensive rigs are kind of an afterthought and they just kind of throw them on the seat or just put them wherever and you just kind of deal with it because it's just a shifter and it's sim racing. But I was able to get this shifter exactly where I want. I found the shifter mount to be remarkably strong being that it's really kind of long and it's only mounted to one inch tubing so sure i mean there was a little bit of a wiggle jiggle when shifting hard but overall it was plenty strong enough to work the other part of the ergonomics is the the seat itself we've got a lot of adjustability front to back which is nice so if i need to slide back and use a keyboard uh, between rounds in a race or to send a message to somebody or to do some web browsing in my rig i can do that for that comfort and then that reclining seat. I just love a reclining seat. It gets me so I have that lumbar support so I can drive for hours. The cushioning, it's a little bit stiff. Uh, it, it's definitely a little bit stiff, but it is comfortable. And I think it'll probably loosen up over time and get even more comfortable. And, and again, $399 rig, you could pay that much for a seat alone. So I, I feel like it's, it's amazing to be able to get a seat that you know, if I've been in the rig for hours and I just need to rest my back a touch, I can just go one click back and just get a little bit of relief and drive like this for maybe five or 10 minutes before I go into the pits. And then, you know, when I'm in doing a pit stop and an endurance race would be a good time to maybe just bring that thing up one more click and back to my normal driving position, but have relaxed my back. And something else I really like about a reclining seat. So with all that covered, Let's move on to the strength. Uh, the strength of this rig is good for what it is. It's a starter rig. It's capped out at a 13 Newton meter wheel. We're using 12 and you can see under normal circumstances, it's quite strong enough for the wheel. So I can drive normally. I can swerve down the, the straightaway. Nothing goes on. I can get into heavy braking and heavy braking to apex and everything is real firm and stable. Now, with that said, if we were to get into more of a rally environment or really be out of control or a maniac on the wheel, if I really move it, if I really, really move it, you can get a little flex. If you push and pull on the rig, you can get a little bit of flex. But under normal use, I think it's, it's quite strong enough for a 12, 13 Newton meter wheel, no problem at all. But that brake, when I hit that brake, it flexes the whole rig. I mean, the most movement I see out of the rig almost is under braking. And if I let go of the wheel, I just see it push that wheel up. If I hold on, I don't notice it nearly as much. So overall, it is a, a strong enough rig, but it's nowhere at the level of strength of a, a three, four inch wide profile chassis that would also set you back $1,200. So for $400, including a seat and a shifter mount and a butt kicker mount, I think the strength is really good. And for its intended user, somebody on a Logitech Thrustmaster or Fanatic starter wheel, 
it's going to be plenty strong enough for all those and even take you all the way up into the mid-range world of a 12 13 newton meter wheelbase so overall it's it's a great rig it's a really good transition rig for somebody who's on a desktop and they're just sick of being on that swivel chair and now they can get into this rig and 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 have it be affordable have it be lightweight and easy to move around the apartment or wherever or if you have a mullet situation you're kind of pulling your rig up to your your desktop you could still do that just pull this right under the desk where you used to race with it clamped on and the monitor is probably almost exactly where it needs to be but it's light enough that you could just kind of slide it back out of position and get back to doing your homework whatever else things you do with your computer so uh, again I'm, I'm very impressed with the amount that next level racing was able to throw into the GT racer for 400 bucks and I'm really impressed with with the overall driving experience for what I would consider a starter rig for sure I think at this point I've covered all my thoughts or everything I have to say on the GT racer everything I think you need to know if you're considering it for the perfect rig for you or not but let's go ahead and make it really clear let's break it down with the good the not so good and the bottom line starting off with the good and that being great price everything you need reclining seat really nice seat for a sub $400 rig add-ons butt kicker mount shifter mount lots of wheel deck adjustability very light for a full chassis compatible with most common gear and now on to the not so good and the first and main thing really is something that i've hit them on several times throughout this review and that is that fixed incline of 20 degrees at the pedal deck slight flex at the middle of the rig under heavy braking and now on to the bottom line bang for buck the next level racing gt racer is a phenomenal deal in the sim racing market today when i think about 399 dollars and everything you get the shifter mount included the butt kicker mount included a nice seat a seat that is almost as expensive as is just the seat alone for the price of the rig all that included really makes up for the small deficiencies in the rig that being the light amount of flex which you'd expect for a lightweight rig the little bit of movement from the shifter it's not perfect but for the type of componentry that belongs on this chassis i think it's perfect it works great with this shifter it would work great with a logitech shifter probably even a fanatic anything super robust you're probably going to want a heavier rig but it, when you get into the word robust in sim racing you're probably talking about more than a 13 newton meter wheel you're probably talking about pro level pedals they're going to have 200 kilogram load cell and be very vertical and not work with this angle Angle. so when I think of who this rig is really built for it's built for new sim racers it's built for people converting from a desk into a rig or somebody on a very tight budget trying to equip their entire sim rig in one shot so I think they really did a good job of making a rig for just that and its little flaws are made up by it for by all of its features so i hope you've enjoyed this show if you'd like to get one of these gt racers we have a link in the description of the show if you use the sim pit code you will get a discount and we will get a little bit of affiliate kickback as well i'm not telling you or asking you to buy the rig i'm just saying if this is the right rig for you not only will you get a discount but you'll help support the show so i hope you've enjoyed this review if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can find out when our next review comes out and thank you for watching. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.